Oh. Oh, man. I'm a little bit sick today, so I'm going full Twitch. Just hanging out. I don't even know if this video is going to make it on YouTube or not. But I do know this. I kind of want to just kind of mess around a little bit today. A couple of things I needed to fix still. Um, probably look at gaming a little bit more. I am really digging the open Sousa approach here. Like this. Uh, let's go. Neo fetch. This has been really, really a good setup. I've actually really enjoyed open Sousa far more than I thought I would. So, oh, man. So, I've I've enjoyed it, but uh, I have noticed, like, gaming and stuff, I don't know on performance-wise what that's going to look like. I've set up, like, Age of Empires 4. I've been playing a little old-school RTS kind of setups, which has been great. Let's check in with old chat here. I see Michael. Low bro, how you all doing? Oh, man. It has been a very, very productive week. Yesterday, uh, we got the new, if you haven't heard... I switched my browser from Brave to Thorium, and I have really loved Thorium. If you're a Linux user, Thorium is hands down the best browser, period. Like, wow. So good. Acceleration, speed, it's all there. And I love Thorium. I'm a Chromium guy. Now, if you're a Firefox guy, he does make another fork called Mercury that's like a de-bloated, fast Firefox so uh check out thorium rocks uh yeah let's go to welcome page and you can download all these i made a video today on the main channel about this uh and he also makes a mercury project if you're into that which mercury i think it is yeah that's a compile a compiler optimized private firefox fork also very cool so very very neat uh check those out man i've really enjoyed that uh oh wait am i already let me see i'm already ah let's just move that into all the workspaces but yeah yeah no no, no. I, I i don't believe in like if you're gonna distro hop you have to live in the distro like yeah, yeah. install it on a vm is fine like, if you're just trying to get, like, a general understanding of, like, maybe a new package manager or something you haven't seen, but to truly review or pass judgment on a distro, you have to pretty much install it and live in it. Otherwise, it's not really a review, is it? It's just fluff. It's like, oh, look, I found a control panel. Ah, that's why I hate distro reviews and on, like, YouTube and stuff. They're kind of kind of garbage. So, for me, yeah. I, you know, I think uh, Ashlyn and some other people in chat uh, wanted it. And, you know, I like I like kind of going back and forth. I'm like, yeah, it's been a while. I think uh, 20, 2000, actually. It was 2020 when uh, the last time I tried it. So I was like, heck yeah. Tommy, thanks for the tier one. Six months. Heck yeah. It's kind of wild. I, I started streaming in April and man it's just been a blast i've know i've made less youtube videos because i've been streaming more but i've just enjoyed it so much more just from a general exploring and i'm able to learn a lot more stuff like we've really dived in we finished one windows one shot console program uh, originally today's stream i was gonna dump into the windows utility gui side of things trying to do win ui 3 and and make a whole gui front end using dot net but i'm not i'm not feeling all that good and i was like i kind of want something i can just do pretty much asleep and linux messing around in linux slash doing a little game optimization and things like that and just chatting with y'all is kind of what's on the agenda for today that's what i thought yeah i mean it's really good try it out bud like I said, I, I, as soon as I hit it and I started seeing the differences between Brave, I, I loved Thorium. I fell in love. Absolutely. Can't stand the colored toolbar icons. What, what is, uh, let's see. What do, what do we got? Colored toolbar icons. What were you seeing for the colored toolbar icons? I'm not sure what you're talking about there, AJ. 
Was it? Oh, yeah, I see what you're talking about. It's the blue. The little blue accents, maybe. Is that what you're talking about? I kind of like it, actually. Teach his own, though. Blue, green, and purple. I don't know about... Oh, here's the green. I don't see purple yet. Yeah, I don't know where that's at. Yeah. Is there a broken arch? Uh, let's take a look. I think I need to set this up for... Hey, we hadn't even tried open Sue's uh, virtual machines yet. Shouldn't be that much uh, different. Well, let's... Uh, Let's see what we got. Uh, bah. QEMU. Probably should just look up. QEMU setup. Open SUSE. Someone's probably already done this. Uh, vert manager. A little bit older. Oh. Oh, they're using a GUI tool. Weird. Uh, but what kind of weirdo uses a GUI in Linux? Okay. Let's keep going. Here we go. I don't want to be here all day. Let's just do that. When you get a moment, take a look at my dark theme uh, tweaks for your site. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love that. Let's see what we got. Open link. Ooh, is this still configured for Brave? It might be. Uh, I need to fix that. Let's look at this pull request. So change background and Twitch card to be the same background color. Uh-huh. Change article icons to be 5% brighter than the color of background. I like it. A little more punchy. Let's see what changes. Just a couple of CSS changes. Uh, going from RGB to that it looks good pagination couple fixes with uh, adding in some of the sub CSS stuff probably some dark mode stuff I missed yeah I like that well, let's 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 push it live man some basic basic fixes but I like it <laughs> Let's scroll down. All right, we got that squash emerge. Thanks, AJ. I appreciate it. Uh, when am I releasing the next WinUtil? Uh, last release was on the 23rd. So we're getting close to a month. I don't like going more than 30 days on the WinUtil. So probably Thursday we'll do a push. Let's take a look at uh, the last. What is it? Yeah, 23rd. So we're coming up six days will be the last. I like to do a release every single month. So that looks good. Spotify. This guy probably did it wrong. Yeah, he did. Got to reject that. Spotify can't be installed with elevated prompt closing PR sadly I can't accept that I'd like that to work but hey yeah I think I'm going to go with 14th gen Intel drop today for those that don't know we got that uh, distro we're using now is open SUSE old SUSE let's see what we got why is he doing user session? That's kind of strange. It's kind of gross. Eh. I mean, he started off well. At least he got the base packages for us. Hey, I know that guy. All right. Uh, let's go QEMU. And we're going to switch. We'll just use the Debian one. We should have a libv divert service real fast um well shoot yeah it's there 
start uh we, we can actually probably just do enable and then i want to say you can just go start right uh what was the options can't remember there was heads a little bit wonky oh now that's it there we go so now we got that active running uh we'll change verse set that to auto start that's fine let's make sure we got default state inactive um <clears throat> I think we can start that net start default. Let's just do that. So now we have active network and it auto starts. Let's modify our user. We'll see if user mod, I don't know if user mods there. Um, that's not quite there, but it didn't give any errors. So I think user mod still works. Yeah, user mod works, cool. I know Arch has a little bit different go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still on OpenSUSE. I like to kind of hang out on distros for at least a couple weeks to a month. Just to just to give it a whirl. Yeah, I don't know. DDR5 ECC memory available. I don't know if that's a thing yet. Usually it takes a while for ECC memory to hit after a, a new generation drops. Oh, we haven't tested out Mango HUD yet. We'll have to do that, Kaiser. Was there anything besides crypto stuff that made you switch from Brave? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, Brave was fine. It was just like there's a bunch of crap in it that I don't use. Like it had like a wallet. It had the start screen with all these weird ads. The Brave stuff was kind of meh. I didn't like I wouldn't like I can't believe this is here. It was more of like. It just felt like garbage sitting in my way. It's like having a bunch of garbage on your desk. That's kind of how I felt about Brave. It wasn't bad, but I just, it didn't feel clean and minimal. It felt, you know, not great. Uh, take on DistroBox. Uh, you know, I need to explore DistroBox more, Pierre. I don't really, you really have a, a, a ruling on that yet. I will, though. I need to do a video on it. Um, yeah, I'll probably do GPU pass through again. Once I get an extra GPU again, right now, all I have is like a 970 I could toss in there, but it's not even worth passing through. You can use distro box to get DaVinci Resolve running on any Linux install. That, that's kind of nice. Okay, so you could grab ECC memory for the DDR4, Michael. That's good. Yeah, Hikari. Well, I definitely will once I have... I'm planning on upgrading my card inside. And I kind of want to replace my 5700 XT AMD card out here just because it's so noisy. Like, when I have my headset on... I like right now I hear the fan noise back there and it drives me nuts now you guys don't hear it because my microphone has great noise cancellation and it's dynamic so the, the further away I get the more noise it cancels but I don't know maybe maybe eventually we'll see oh yeah the TUI for for the Golang is, is really amazing Hikari I really like your setup on that and I I'm looking forward to trying it out. Okay, so we have uh, this pretty much done. Let's give it a reboot. Um, what was the... Oh, no. Um, I can't remember my hotkey. <laughs> uh, what was my hotkey? It was Control, Shift, Mod, Key, R. Uh, okay. So control shift mod key. Nah, yeah, that works. Sweet. Let's give it a reboot. Oh, did the capture card it overheat again? Oh, geez. I'm about to switch that out. I got to switch it back to the, 
Although, you know, I, it hadn't been on that long. Oh, I did have it baking in here, though. Because usually I have it like around 76. And then, I don't know, ever since I got sick, I, I really like a lot of heat. So I've had it up to like 84 or 86 in here. Enough to kind of make you sweat. Just because it felt really good. Um, Although my computers, I don't think, liked that. Darn it. <sighs> well, we could do... Let's just replace the capture card live on stream. Oh, wait, nope, I can't. Because that's what's streaming. <laughs> oh, man. Dang it. Let's see. Let's just see here. Oh, oh, no, there. That one went. That one? No. No. Yeah, that's a stupid capture card. Oh, God. Oh, man. What is going on? All right. One second. What's happening? Desktop. Come on, what's going on here? We're just 20 minutes in. I could just shut it down and then swap out my card. That would probably be the best way to do it. And then I just got to reconfigure my OBS. Yeah, it's still 20 minutes in. Let's just cut the stream right here. Give me five to 10 minutes to swap this card out. Let me just make sure I still have that other card. Yeah. So let me just go full screen since you can't even see my desktop anyways. Uh, what's that look like? Direct cam. Okay. Am I like, feels like I'm crooked anyways. Oh, well, whatever. Yeah. This is what I'm using right now. It's terrible. It, it keeps overheating. It has four HDMIs, which is great, but the card inside it which i was replacing it works on linux instead of this one doesn't work on linux uh the the cam link but i do have a mage well here so i'm going to switch it out to the mage well and then that would work or instead of starting the stream i got another idea we'll just use this capture card that should work let's see um this is another idea let me make sure. What did I do with that? Okay. Let's see. I do not have a USB-C port. Oh, well, that's handy. Oh. One second. I've got this. I'm going to fix it right now. Well... Oh, okay. Oh. Nope. What? Once I got more cables out here. Well, note to self, I need to buy some more USB-C cables. I'm running loud. Okay, we got one. I'll just use this guy. Hopefully it doesn't overload my USB ports. That would be a sad face. Alrighty. Look. That one is going over there. Not exactly where I want to go. And this one is going there. Okay. Okay. Let's see what that does. We're going to try and do a live stream reconfiguration. Uh, let's see if it recognizes it. Let's just grab video capture device. We'll call this the HD60S. I don't think I've ever used this thing. So, all right. We go custom resolution. Huh. Let's go 1920 by 1080. Okay. Properties. Okay, well, this looks like Maybe it's not my capture card. Maybe. Oh, oops. 
Yeah. I found... Found the issue. Oh, man. That is... Probably why that's like that. Okay, one second. Let me think this through. Alright, we got that over to here. We got our splitter. It's coming out of here. Oh, man. Did this even power up? I don't even think that powered up. Wait. Take that. Oh, I think my splitter went bad. Man, that's what I get for cheap Amazon splitter stuff. Yeah, i say the splitter went out. Let's see. Maybe. Yeah, I got a $30 splitter that, you know, it's not the best. But, did that work? Ah, uh, hmm. Nope. Hmm. Oh, good. It's going to be one of them days. Let me think. Well, I got another splitter. Let's try that. Okay, yeah, that works. So, now we should have... Right. Um. Hmm. We have nothing. Yeah, no, I blew. I actually switched out to the 1080p splitter, and then that just shot craps on me. Maybe I'll switch it back, maybe. I don't God bless. All right. Put that there. Let's put this here. That seems to work, but... Oh, oops. I plugged it in the wrong splitter. Yeah. Okay. Plug that one in. This guy. And then... Magic. Maybe? Gosh, all right. It's okay, I got another idea. We're gonna throw it through a switcher. That might work. All right. Goes into a switcher. One output, and then... No signal. It's okay. Okay, I got another idea. We're gonna just take this guy this guy. Alright. Pick this up into here. And... Alright. I got it. I got it. Alright. Perfect. Alright. And... We'll just do a custom display. And then... It'll work. Desktop. Mm-hmm. We'll just do a default display. And... Oh, it was working? Oh, no. Oh. Oh, gosh. Really? It was working? Oh, okay. Okay, okay. We're going to go back to step one. And then it should be fine. cable goes somewhere else it's okay I, it makes sense to me just got to track down a couple more cables and then it'll be fine you're right in the rain um this cable i don't know where that goes we're just gonna switch that out too we're gonna take this cable now i've removed four cables this cable is gonna be the magic cable all right and then we should have Hey! There we go. All right, we just had four extra cables we had to remove. But it's all working now. Ah, perfect. This stream is going off so well. 
<sighs> computer stuff you know it's just like uh, kindergarten if it doesn't go into the hole you just keep pushing it until it does you know you know i'm the you know taking that square block and put in the square hole that's me <sighs> ah all right ah that's beautiful um what do we got let's go back ah there we go all right ah oh what are we what are we at what what resolution do we end up on so we're at 1080p 14 144 hertz so i do have the higher refresh right now with that new splitter i did remove a bunch of components in there and did a bypass too so less stuff to interfere so hopefully this works a lot better I still feel like I need to move off of the Camlink Pro though. It just it's caused a lot of issues in the past and I feel like the Magewell never let me down. But the Magewell's like three times more three times as expensive, so take that with a grain of salt. Anyways, getting back to what I was actually going to show you all which Let's see what happened. Uh, also, read chat. Did I miss something in chat? Uh, undo your last two setups. It was working. Oh no! <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so to fix the not reading chat problem, check out this thing. It's called the Elgato prompter. So what it is, is is a secondary screen. I don't really care about like the camera and stuff or using it as a teleprompter because we all know I'm, I'm barely literate and me reading and actually doing a video is just never gonna happen. I've given up on that dream. But this is what I want, right? Uh, let's go back, let's go back to this one. Look at this, uh, can I zoom in? Yes look at this right here let's go over up that is what i want so then my camera right here chat would be literally one foot from my face so i could see what you guys are saying without having to like look all the way up here in the upper right which we all know i'm not gonna that's kind of cool so that's that's a new device that i should have coming in this just released yesterday or today from elgato and that's going to be that's going to be a huge improvement to the stream still going to miss a lot of chat but i think this last 10 minutes illustrates this would be a game changer for me me reading more chat will definitely cause less headaches i'm pretty sure <laughs> All right, and now I think we were starting with, was it? Oh, yeah, 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 we were doing Faye. Uh, did we? Yes, cool. So we have Faye now, and it's setting the background. Perfect. So that's set. Uh, let's jump over to DWM, Vim, look at config. Just to make sure that's what we're launching. BG Max, backgrounds bolt, perfect. So let's just do a sudo make install. So then on reboot, it's gonna do that. So we've got that fixed. Next up is virtualization. Vert manager. We should have the groups as well. So if we look at groups, I'm in libvert and Titus. And that means we should have access to all of our pools. Let's just launch into an arch, arch one real fast. Let's go images. And we're going to go down to the root drive. Where is that? Where are you? Images. It's not in recent. There you are. Open, finish. So now we'll have an images pool. We got that one. Perfect. Arch Linux. Boom. Uh, let's go six CPUs. 
8128. Do about 8 gigs. 20. And somebody earlier was like, let's customize this as well. We're going to go UEFI. Why do we have so many UEFI choices here? Huh. Usually I'd go UEFI and I usually do this on Debian. I guess it would be... You can just try the base UEFI. I want to say you need to do code though. Oh well, worst case it doesn't work. And then I also like to change the topology. It always screws up. We'll change the topology. That should work now. Alrighty. Here we go. Yeah, this one just trucking out. Open Souza. Welcome to the stream there, Dolphin. Uh, well, I just kind of mess around usually on these streams just to say, hey, this is this is what's up. Uh, let's go set font. Uh, set font tur-v 28b yeah we'll get some terminus font we'll do a bash greater than and then we're curl l chris titus.com forward slash arch titus and that should update and get arch going someone said that it didn't uh oh key ring issue uh let's go syy and then we'll bash it again. Um, uh, keyring's not writable. Ah, good to hear, Coot. Yeah, I love Thorium. That's uh what I'm using right over here. Quick question: Is it okay if you did your DWM config? How did you find out what keys for brightness control and stuff are called? Uh Chat GPT is a really good one, but you can see that <laughs> halfway joking, but usually you can go into sys class. And you can list out, actually, just a standard listing would probably be better. But usually all your stuff would be in here. So like battery, backlight, so backlight. And if this was a laptop, there'd be a lot of different variables in here. Probably Intel backlight would be in the next subdirectory if this is like an Intel laptop. And then you can specify all that from the DWM. I tried to like do if variables for all that. But if I'm missing some variables, just let me know and I can add it to the script. Great question, though. But you can always uh, query that mostly from the sys uh, root subdirectory. WSL is actually pretty fast if you're doing Linux in Windows for some like reference stuff while you're in Windows. I, I like WSL, um, but it's not a replacement for Linux. It's just a good reference for Linux it, it, for a Windows user. No Linux user is going to go use WSL and go, wow, this is so much better than Linux. That's not a thing. But there will be Windows users that go, ah, I don't want to boot into Linux to reference this, and they can just use WSL for reference. That's what WSL is really good for. And I, I appreciate WSL, but a lot of times if I'm in Windows, I prefer the more native solution, which would be PowerShell with Windows Terminal. I know. I know it's weird, but it's worth learning. Learn both. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mansoor, I was planning a complete revamp of your website. How's that going? Not really. <laughs> uh, I get I get ADD a little bit, and I kind of jump around. Uh, I might jump on that at some point in time, but right now I'm just kind of like, eh, I might approach that here in a little bit. I really, my site does everything I want it to do. It's just little stuff here that i might just refresh it's nothing like i don't like this about my website i love everything about the infrastructure but i'm not a design guy i can't tell you what looks good like to me this looks beautiful to most it probably doesn't uh what happened here keyring not writable trust database could not be updated what huh let's just download a new arch um so we'll shut down arch and then let's just get a new we'll just uh force off for now 
download. Arch Linux really doesn't like old ISOs. That's the one down thing about Arch is like the old ISOs are almost worthless. You have to download the new hotness. Let's go down to the United States, probably grab a lease web or rack space is good too. We'll grab the Dallas rack space or we won't grab the Dallas rack space. Uh, let's go lease web DFW. Yeah, there's a Dallas. There's a local mirror for me. We'll grab that and then uh, relaunch. I moved to Brave personally. For some reason, Firefox ran horribly on my Linux install. And I could not figure out why. That's weird. Usually, Firefox is one of the best out of the box on Linux. I really liked Thorium, mainly because it was one of the only Chromium-based Linux browsers that work really well. Brave, however, has treated me pretty well over the years. I, can't, I have no really qualms about Brave other than to say I don't appreciate a lot of the bloat that comes with Brave. You know, the, the crypto ads, the wallet, the other garbage that nobody really uses it just kind of sits there and i get why they do it so they can actually make money but uh i i thought thorium's approach was a lot better than braves and that's why i switched personally all right let's throw arch over here and we're going to delete this old one delete oh this arch iso was updated on 10 14 really recent okay uh, let's change that CD-ROM. We're going to go images and let's refresh that pool. Switch to 1014. Apply. Let's change our boot priorities. Apply that. And then let's start this guy back up. Any reason for not using Firefox beside it not being a Chromium browser? No, uh, Kaiser, I, I recommend people use Firefox. I, I think Firefox is great. The only thing, I, I just personally don't like it. it. It's just not my cup of tea. And and that's just my personal preference. I don't have anything bad to say about it. It just not just not for me. All right, let's just do that. I think we're going to have a little bit easier time. Or not. What? What is going on with uh, the Arch installer? Huh. No git. Okay, that is odd. Let's just do a curl L. You know what? Let's just W get this. All right, W get get invalid or corrupt signature. <laughs> It's literally a fresh ISO. What the hell, Arch? Is time synced? I mean, maybe, maybe that's issue. Maybe it's got to be time, right? Let's check time date CTL. Yeah, that's right. What the world? Maybe it doesn't like BIOS mode. Oh, literally right now we're just running this command. We're not doing anything. It's having... Okay, let's reboot again. Uh, did Arch put out a bad update? Hmm. Yeah, chat's saying I'm in BIOS mode. Maybe that's the problem. Hmm. Yeah, look at this. All right, so we'll do a database refresh. This is a brand new ISO. I've done nothing, right? No scripts run. But then we're going to go Pac-Man S for install, git, and wget, right? Two very basic, very small packages. So that worked. Huh. So I guess let's just try... Uh, 
Let's just try this then. That was odd. That was very odd. Okay. I don't know what happened there. Uh, test. Let's do server. Someone was saying we we're having issues with uh, it not syncing the proper... Uh, the Arch install not having a login or something. <laughs> Personally, I used Tur 132. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that was just Arch being Arch. I agree with you, Killa. Arch can be inconsistent at times. I mean, I still love it for what it is. It's fun to play with. It is totally fun to play with. And I've been really enjoying Sousa in this journey. We'll see how long that lasts, but it's been good. Oh, I did do better FS there. I should have probably done... EXT4, but eh, we're already like halfway through the install. I like Arch. I don't, I wouldn't call Arch bad. I like the fact that you can try out all the like new hotness of stuff that's coming out. That's really cool. And with like all the new stuff, I just treat it kind of like Windows, you know? Windows updates will probably break things, but you know. Yeah, hopefully Peter's not in chat right now. <laughs> uh, let's go. Oh, I thought. All right, so we're installed. Let's just uh, let's just power off. Do a power off, and we'll just remove the CD from a boot. Start it back up. Hey, I, you know, I really dig. I'll, I'll probably take another run at Nick's OS here soon. Yeah, I don't know what people are talking about. It works. Um, let's install NeoFetch. Yeah, we got sudo. And there's a arch. Okay, yeah. It installs, so I'm not sure what they're, they were probably talking about the desktop packages. The desktop packages I need to revisit someday. I just haven't had the time lately. But I do. I, I use that all the time to just spin up like a quick arch image. Also, the the virtualization setup, I don't know if you guys noticed. For this being OpenSUSE, that worked pretty good. I mean, it's a little bit. It's definitely heavy on the packages. OpenSUSE does grab a lot of dependencies, but that's pretty good. I like it. That was, that was really neat. Uh, no, no, yeah, we're still on we're still on open Susan. Like I said, I've actually enjoyed the build service. I've enjoyed. Uh, let's do a live update, right? <laughs> this is the true test. Like usually in Arch, like second week, you go to update and you're like, "Oops, broke it." Uh, <laughs> let's do a live update. Uh, so let's do a zipper ref for refresh repositories. Okay, sudo zipper dup for distro upgrade. Sure. It does grab new packages every day, kind of like Arch. I will notice because I updated this two or three days ago and we already got 46 new packages. I would say this is a little bit more, uh, probably not as bleeding as as, as Arch, but it's pretty darn close to Arch as far as packages go. Especially with the open build service, much like the AUR from Arch. I'm impressed. I, I thought, honestly, I'd be already throwing Sousa in the trash, but I I will admit here I was I was wrong. It's a very good distro. I really have enjoyed it. It works. It's quick. Uh, we haven't tried gaming yet. I think that was the whole purpose of this stream, right? Linux gaming. Let's launch Steam. Let's see how that goes. I've already customized a little bit, and I was playing some Ages of Empire 4, so I know that should work. Uh, we should probably try Starfield and some other stuff. I don't know. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll let chat decide what we'll we'll try to install and tinker with. Uh, because I know Starfield did not work for us last time we, we tried it. 
Uh, this one is what I've been playing. I love me some ages. Check this out. This is my new... I know Age of Age of Empires 4 is just basically Age of Empires 2 with a couple modifications and reskinned. And I'm terrible at RTS. But I really enjoy Age of Empires 4. It has been fun. Oh, we could do Cyberpunk too. It's not bad. I already switched like uh, this, made it a little bit smaller, so it's not quite in your face. We can see like the frame times, uh, GPU. This should get it going pretty quick. But this does work pretty darn well. I was kind of surprised by it. So, neat. Do we have competing music? I bet we do. I will pause. But I love this is this has been been a blast. So this one does work well. Here I'm not gonna bore you guys with Age of Age of Empires gameplay. But that's something I'm trying to get better at. But I love it. Ugh. All the ages, honestly. Age of Empires 2, of course, is the OG. But the new Age of Empires 4, I have fallen in love with. Uh, what do we say? We have Starfield installed. Cyberpunk is what someone else mentioned. We have Cyberpunk. We could throw that on here. That's a good one. Uh, game frame rates for the hardware in AOE 4 was pretty solid. I want to say we were... Uh, we could try real fast just to see what the frame rates are. Because for the hardware, we are running a 5700 XT on a Ryzen 5600X. So to show you, there's the CPU and GPU. Let's see what the frame rates are in game. What are your top five favorite games through time? Oh, probably for PC gaming starts with Quake. Quake and Quake 2 were my jam. Didn't like Quake 3 that much. Around that time, I started transitioning over to EverQuest, the original Ever EverQuest 1. EverQuest 2, I thought, was trash. So I played EverQuest 1 for 15 years or so, so I was really into EverQuest 1. Still play it today, honestly. I'd, I'd load it up on another computer. Um, here, we'll just do a solo battle. Oh, who should we play? Um, English, right? English is fine. We'll do English. Let's see what our, our frame rates are. Right now, it looks like uh, this is obviously just the load screen. I don't know what the frame... Frame rate should be above 60, though, I would imagine. So we're at 135, almost solid. Now we can max out at like uh, 144, so we're a little bit less than the cap, but that's pretty darn high for this hardware. This is pretty pretty basic hardware, I'd say. Uh, let's go there. Go there. Uh, we got some deer, a relic, other stuff. I'm I've been watching a bunch of YouTube videos on how to get better at this game, so I'm not just awful. But I'm still pretty awful. So yeah, I'd say this frame rate, I'm not gonna bore you guys with the AI AI game, but still pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah, go and day hunt ya. Yeah, yeah. Work Ano 1800? I don't know, Max. I haven't really messed with that. <laughs> I do have the gaming channel blue. I just never have uh never have uh, done anything with it. But I need to. I really do dig it though. I need to get back into gaming a little bit. Yeah. I'd say that's pretty darn steady. Like, flipping around, we're not getting any. Here, I'm making you guys sick, I'm sure, but... Not really getting any of that.
it's just pegged right at that as steady as could be cpu gpu is not even maxed out about 74 percent so age of empires 4 with this setup you can do pretty much anything obviously if you had a whole bunch more villagers that'd be a different story but yeah that is pretty darn solid <laughs> make it age of yawn <laughs> all right all right let me quit let me quit uh anywho that works really well i love me some age of empires 4 this is actually i don't think i need to install like the proton db setting for it age of empires 4 what does that get probably gold i don't know silver that's right so if you want to play multiplayer they do have a script you have to run otherwise you can get crashes but a lot of people are saying it does run a little bit better on uh linux than it does on the other counterpart i also change a couple things i do mango hud game run mode command i force my resolution with a dash w 1920 and then i do dash no movies this is pretty much a global steam command so dash w 1920 will always force like 1920 by 1080 uh obviously use like 250 for those 1440p players out there but yeah let's try starfield starfield didn't work last time as well uh eesh. i guess let's just try it out of the box with no changes right we don't haven't forced anything we've it's just been installed let's just play it and see what happens it's still open susa like i said harry i was i was like man i'm really impressed with how good open susa has been now i know starfield did kick up a bunch of errors last time on launch i think we had to force uh a certain i think it was dxvk into a certain version before it would work but we're gonna try it as vanilla and then we'll go on proton db troubleshoot anything maybe even mess around with modding a little bit i don't know would you recommend open Sousa? yeah i would recommend it if you need like an rpm or a rel based package distro open Sousa definitely gets my vote and the more i use it i'm like hmm. i mean to quote the great Todd Howard, it just works. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I haven't done anything to this one. We, we do need to like mod it out a little bit and stuff. Yeah, I would say open, open Susan's zipper is a bit slow. I'll, I'll give you that but it's very reliable it seems like um let's just try to continue here load up my gandalf space wizard character level 24 i'm becoming the jeff bezos of the ga galaxy here <laughs> all right cool a little dark, isn't it? So brightness. So we have FSR on, FSR 2. What do we turn this off? Oh, yeah. FPS really... Yeah, we're down in the 80s and 90s. Let's change that. Let's take that back to FSR2. Yeah, uh, well. Maybe it just liked me staring at a black wall. No. Let's quit. Let's go back to the desktop. Yeah, RPM packages are pretty reliable. Rocky's great for a server, Rocky Linux, but eh, 
The problem is with all the Red Hot drama, I can't really recommend it anymore. I only like community distros at this point. Sousa at least hasn't done anything stupid lately. Where you can't say them that about Red Hat or Ubuntu. That's all they do is stupid stuff, it seems like. Hey, Elena, thanks for the raid. <laughs> oh, how y'all doing? We're just messing around in Linux today. Yeah, with that, I don't think FSR is... When you disable it, you saw it drop from the 130, 140 FPS down to 80. But I'm going to reload it real fast just to see if that FSR was actually working. Uh, Chris, what advice would you have for someone that's burnt out on games and can't find enjoyment anymore? Kenny, I'm right there with you, man. I've actually really started getting more into programming. Now, I would not recommend what I did, which was going to C Sharp. I really started tinkering around with Rust a little bit, and you can easily pick it up. Getting into programming with all the learning tools at your available, that's just at everybody's dispense right now, is amazing. You can learn anything quickly, but don't go spend money on like crappy stuff like Skillshare or whatever it might be. What you want to do is just get on ChatGPT or whatever you have. Have that have the actual manual to reference just online whatever the latest was from the actual uh like rust has like the rust foundation with the cheat sheet uh, like a wikipedia okay that wasn't me it was just 80 fps but do that and then just jump into programming a little bit and see if there's something that comes out because it's been a while since i've really fallen in love with gaming honestly i think fsr is kind of a scam in this game. I think it's just poorly implemented. If we can turn it off. All right, so we were like upper 70s, lower 80s, right? We turned FSR off. Now we're upper 80s, lower 90s. So I think FSR is... It gives us worse performance. How does that make any sense? Yeah, it's off. What? Okay. So, there you go. That's how optimized old Starfield is. Uh, FSR actually gives you worse frame rates, and it gives you a worse clarity in picture. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is wild. Okay. I guess we can try and mod this out, too. Uh, so, modding out Starfield, you just need Vortex. Let's punch into this. There's a cool tool called Proton Tricks. Proton Tricks. Let's install a little Pro Proton Tricks. You can grab it from the AUR. It's mainly just a script. So you don't really need to use something like... I'm on Suze right here, but... You could just grab it directly from GitHub as well. Can we test any 32-bit games? Seems like Mango HUD's not working on them. Yeah, what 32-bit games uh, did you have in mind? This is another thing I like about Sousa. It gives you solutions. Do not install. Break Proton Tricks 1.10 by ignoring some of the dependencies. What dependencies is it missing? Nothing provides setup tools. We're going to say solution to break it. Let's just install it. Let's see what happens. Okay. Proton Tricks. <laughs> uh... Let's, let's just try it again. Proton tricks. Okay. Let's try this desktop install. What's that? Required file not found. Weird. Zipper. Let's just do a dash U proton tricks. Let's remove that. Uh, if you do a debt, no. What was the flat? Oh, remove. Yes. Okay. So that didn't work. That's okay. We'll just grab Proton Tricks. GitHub. Matto King. Is this an old one? I can't remember. Last. Oh, no. Uh, last commit was yesterday. 
we'll grab the latest and greatest, which would be wrapper desktop installation. We could use Pipx, flat pack. Okay. Probably just do Pipx, right? Didn't we remove Proton Tricks? Huh. Let's try Proton Tricks again. <laughs> Strange. All right. No such file Python. Huh. Yeah, flat pack Proton Tricks. I couldn't imagine using. I mean, we could just grab the script too. Yeah. I've really enjoyed switching from Brave. I've really enjoyed Thorium. It's been really fast. And I've... I like it. I really do. Let's see. Open Sousa. Now we got Nix. You can also try Nix. I haven't really messed with it. Probably Python 3 setup tools. I don't think that's going to work quite. But let's look for these packages. I think we're just missing some dependencies. All right, no pipx or pips libs. Let's try that. All right. And we do have some suggestions. We'll grab that. And we'll also grab that. That's already installed. That's already installed. Yeah, some incompatibilities here with Proton Tricks. We don't really need Proton Tricks, but. It's fine. Uh, no, it's not based on Ungoogle Chromium. Uh, Thorium takes some of the patches from Ungoogle Chromium, but it still has a Google sign in. So there's Google implemented in it, but a lot of the telemetry has been disabled and ripped out. They've added in a lot of Kodiex and other hardware advancements, which have been great. So it's a lot faster, snappier, and it's very consistent across all operating systems, whether it's Mac, Linux, Windows, it just works well. So that's the one thing I could say about Brave is it worked pretty, it was a pretty consistent experience between Windows and Linux and Mac for that matter. But uh, it's very rare to run into that. Like with Vivaldi, I ran into some inconsistencies on Linux. <laughs> all right, let's Bushman. <laughs> It should actually be, the gaming tool should get that, but it does not. Because it wants setup tools, but the dependent is just not resolving the dependency very well. That's okay. I just like Proton Tricks to list out uh, the directories. We'll just manually hunt them down. Uh, let's go. I think it's just Steam apps and common or compat data. Uh, LS010. Can't remember the game ID for that. Vortex, Starfield, Linux. How oh, good to hear, Kenny, man. I love it. I'm still working on it, man. We're going to be doing an update on Thursday's stream. I was originally going to do a GUI or work on the GUI on today's stream, but I'm kind of sick. That's why I'm, you know, I was like, that's not going to end well. Don't, don't program with a fogged mind. Whether I blow up this system, I'm kind of like, ah, I don't really care. <laughs> Michael, thanks for the gifted subs, man. Oh, let's see here. What do we got? Ark and Fox. What is Ark and Fox? Oh, it's a user on GitHub? Well, maybe not. Torzilla. Uh, um, Firefox, privacy, security, and anti-tracking. Ah, uh, I got you. I see what you're alluding to here. There was another script I was using. I want to say it was Simon on security, the privacy Firefox script that I've used in the past for Firefox users. <laughs> All right. For this, what do we have here? Home of the development for the Nexus Mods app. Mod with confidence. I want to say the CLI runs on programs. Interesting. So we have an app image. 
How's that work? It being self-contained. I'm kind of curious. I haven't seen this. Did Nexus Mods release a Linux app? It looks like. Well, that's new. Linux Gaming just got to level up here if uh, if indeed this is what it is. Uh, there it is. Uh, let's do a CH mod. Let's make it writable or executable. Nexus. Anybody use Nexus Mods app image yet? Am I, have I been sleeping on this? All right, well. <laughs> oh, it's their new app. Oh, okay. Very cool. It's a good point. Thanks for the prime, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not that bad. I mean, I can't, but you're asking the wrong guy. A lot of, I like the tinkering. The tinkering around is what I live for. <laughs> Nexus Mods app. Let's try in the binary on this. So the app image just died on us. Let's try the binary files. Let's do unzip Nexus Mods. Uh, probably should have done that in its own directory. <sighs> Mistakes were made. All right. Nexus Mods app. Let's see if this launches. Hey. Okay. There we go. It's not so bad. Nothing works, but it, they're they're working on it. They're working on it. Okay. How's it launching Firefox? Do I have Firefox installed? Didn't even notice that. Huh. Oh yeah, yeah. Diablo and Poe. When you get a chance, check out the last epoch. Yeah, I've looked at Lost Epoch. I actually bought it. It's it's good uh, in between between for ARPGs kind of been burnt out after Diablo 4 kind of did us dirty. How long have you been using Thorium now? Would you still recommend it as a daily driver? Only a week. So I'm still kind of in the honeymoon phase. Check back in a month. But I am still very, very much loving it. As time goes on, I've only loved it more. So, yeah. I really still mean everything I, I released in that video today. Yeah, you have a lot of bloat. No doubt. Oh, gosh. You and your opera. Uh, you know, I got a comment today. Someone was like, is this faster than Opera GX, the gaming browser? And I was like, dude, anything's faster than Opera GX. Literally anything you install is better. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't troll my YouTube comments. But when I get stuff like that, oh, and then there was another one that was like, Thorium's coming up with a virus with my Norton... A scan I was like well there's your problem you have Norton installed uninstall the virus in your system called Norton <laughs> it's like next you're gonna be like I installed McAfee come on now Norton and McAfee are not real programs these days they are viruses themselves I've told people this time and time again they just bloat up your system they don't offer that good of protection if anything better than Defender, so you might as well just use Defender if you want to use Norton or McAfee. And they want to upsell you and just bombard you with a bunch of garbage with their internet suite and password managers and... Ugh. Norton McAfee. Ah, every time I hear the name, it just enters my thought. I just want to... It's caused a lot of problems over the years, as you can tell. I just wish they would do better and make a decent product, but they don't. <laughs> all right all right here we go yeah opera is a good they've offered me a lot of money to do plenty of integrations on the channel but i have never done it they're just awful and i let them know that i was like i'm sorry i cannot recommend a virus to my my fans <laughs> or my audience <laughs> like no you can't it's awful What's an antivirus for Windows that you do recommend? Honestly, Defender's not that bad. It's okay. You can use... Um, I'm trying to think. I hate recommending antivirus just because they change so rapidly. Webroot Secure Anywhere is actually not that bad. I know a lot of people doesn't score very high in the detection rates, but it stays out of the way and it does a decent job and it's pretty performant. 
Kaspersky Cloud Free is not awful, but it's Kaspersky, so eh, it's it's middle of ground. Maybe maybe fractionally better than Defender, and there's a couple. Of, I mean, Sophos is not bad. I like Sophos. A little bit big, but good detection rates. Hmm. I'm sure I'm forgetting a couple here that I would recommend, but. Yeah, you can do Clam AV. That's open source AV if you want. Virus Total is a good online one you could do. Bit Defender is solid. I agree with Bit Defender. Nod32 is also a very good one. Nod32 is one of the very first antiviruses. They were out in, I want to say 1987, 88. So they're very first ones on the scene, and they've actually maintained a decent one. The only caution I'd have for a lot of these that we were talking about, whether it's Bit Defender, uh, Nod32, Kaspersky, they all want to sell you some internet suite. Never, ever buy the security suite. Only buy the antivirus. The security, the security suites are just hot garbage. They add so much overhead to your system, and they give you very little additional protection that's worth a damn. The best protection you can have is just don't be stupid on the internet. Easier said than done, but that's that's just the truth. Truth of the matter. <laughs> Zone alarm. Man, I remember Zone alarm. Are they still around? People are still in Zone alarm, are they? It was cool back in the day, man. Oh my gosh. It's still a thing. Oh, get zone alarm on your mobile device. <laughs> uh, they used to be just a firewall back in the day. They've expanded it, of course, to all the other crap. Uh, uh, subscribe to our newsletter at the end there. It was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but it was cool i mean zone alarm had like this really neat toolbar back in windows like i want to say it was like i want to say 2002 2001 era there was some really cool like heads up displays for zone alarm and hey i'm tracking all the incoming and outgoing traffic it was it was fun it was a fun app back in the day i don't know if it was ever any good though <laughs> All right, what do we got? Um, Uh-oh, what did I do? Did, did I break my system? I broke it. Uh-oh, what, what's going on here? Uh-oh. Oh! Oops, I know what it is. It's installing Cyberpunk in the background. We never finished it. <laughs> oh man yeah i think we just gotta wait it out yeah there there it goes okay so, so what was happening my my hard drive is still locked so if we look at disk usage um oh let's go b top right or bash top what is it? Uh, B top or bash top in Sousa? I'm looking back and my, my hard drive's completely pegged back there. Bash top. Cyberpunk froze the system. Yeah, I, I really like B top. Now, I want to say this should. OPI is pretty good about detecting it. I want to say they renamed it B top. Did I ever release that VM memory as well? Oh, my system is just crawling right now. That'd be hilarious if it was Thorium after that video dropped today that caused this. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Oh, it'd be just my luck. We do have a lot going on in the background. All right, come on. Settle down over there, computer. Did it crash? I don't want to hard boot this. That's hilarious. Man, this has been a stream of problems. Uh, I 
And I shouldn't have... So I did something silly on this. And I think after we've... I think we got to... I think we got to move that home folder again, guys. I did something stupid during the install, and I think we're paying for it right now. You're going to laugh at me. You remember those PNY drives I said talk so much smack and trash about? Well, I still used them. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, come on. Damn it. All right. I know. I shouldn't have done it. Oh. I shouldn't have done it. This is what I get for, for doing that. Uh, let's go. Well, let's just uh, switch that. We're going to switch it. We're going to switch it, go into, like, bin bash, and then we're going to just change it around a little bit. Okay. Um, um, so, it didn't mount the home folder now. What we're going to do is LSB OK, and we're going to mount, I think it was SD. Let's do a BLK ID. I don't need sudo, but whatever uh which one is it sda oh no sdb home sdc at home better fs all right let's just cat etc fs tab okay we are grabbing uh, what is it? E6D is our home directory, which is E6D would be SDB1. So let's mount uh, dev SDB1 to MNT. Okay. And we have an orphan, you know, it's detected recovery complete. <laughs> Why did I use this drive again? I'm such an idiot. All right, let me increase this text so y'all can see what's up. Oh, God. It is hilarious, though. It is funny, right? Y'all gotta love the fact I just trip over my... I am, like, literally the guy riding on my bike. I am that meme. All I do is just grab the stick and just stick it in the pokes, spokes and just like, what happens now? <laughs> let's let's just use this old PNY drive that has caused me nothing but problems. <laughs> oh man, that's too great. All right, what what's MNT look like? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, all right. Let's go R sync. AVP. And we're just going to take MNT star and put it here. Read only file system. Skipping contents. Okay, fine. Rsync errors. What? We're not transferred. Read only file system. Oh, we're in a read only file system because I did init bin bash. Hmm. Oopsies. Yeah, we're not going to be able to do that. <sighs> That's okay. Well, we haven't broke it yet. We haven't broke it yet. Well, I mean, we kind of broke it, but not all the way broke it. Yeah, EXT4 does the job. It's probably the most stable. I, I agree with that. So, we're, we're going to just kill DWM, just death to it, come back into here, then we're going to drop into TTY, then we're going to, can we log in as root? <laughs> that is the greatest. Oh my gosh, can you see that? Let's, uh, oh my gosh, I just fell in love. Look at that. 
Thank you, Open Sousa team. Logged in as Root and it was like, have a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. Oh. Oh, it's not going to allow us to unmount that, is it? Mm. That's okay. I got another idea. We'll boot into Arch. Arch can fix this. Arch ISO time. Here we go. Pull out the big guns. All right. We're going to go into here. We'll fix open scissors. We're going to move our home directory off of that PNY drive over into the SS or the SD drive. Oh, geez. I hadn't done anything label. Well, well whatever. We'll use an old arch install. It's like that Star Wars meme. It's an old code, but it checks out. <laughs> And when you've done something perfectly, you know it wasn't Titus. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, all right, we're going to go 28B. All right, let's uh, mount. Ooh, I want to say we are E0 in one. That 301 looks like me. And that 16M with the 300 at the end looks super jacked up, so that's got to be Windows. We're going to mount the... We'll go mount dev nv me 0 n one p 3 into MNT. Okay. And then if we list MNT, you'll see that's everything we have. Now, typically, there's a media one. Let's, we're going to do this a way jacked up way. So don't, don't ever do this at home, but we're going to call jacked up PNY drive. It seems a little long and unnecessary, but we're going to do that. And then we're going to go mount dev. Did we, it was SDB1, I want to say. The SDB1 to MNT Media Jacked Up PNY Drive. And then if we do an LS of that, we got the home folder. Uh, let's do an all listing. There should be like lost files and other stuff in there, but hmm. Interesting. That looks off to me. Because it says September 1st. I'm I'm usually not with the times, but it's October. So I'm thinking I mounted the wrong drive. That must have been another jacked up drive. <laughs> jacked up install. Let's uh let's amount that. Yeah, but they were so cheap at the time I bought them. <laughs> Uh, and this one, let's do SDA1, I want to say. All right, now let's do a LS. Yes, so that looks right. Okay, so the timestamps match up. Now we're good. So if we do a LS, MNT, home, nothing's there. Nothing's there. All right, great. So now let's do an rsync, AVP, and we're going to grab everything from MNT, media, Jacked up drive, star, and we're going to push that to MNT home. And this is just going to take everything, dump it in there. I should have probably dumped my brave cash before we did this. <laughs> being cheap doesn't always mean good quality. Usually being cheap does not, no. But I don't know. I'm, I kind of like to MacGyver stuff. Like the other day I walked into, I think it was work, and they had like this old piece of crap. I think it was like a third or fourth gen Intel computer. And it was kind of like just hobbling along. And I spent like two hours just messing around on it. And like, I'll just use this as my workstation now. 
I can just install DWM and get a minimal setup and it'll work just fine. I mean, I did it and it worked great, but then after I got it done, I was like, well, I did that. But this computer really sucks, so I'm going to move on now. <laughs> Slippery's admin, thanks for the prime. <laughs> Repeat after me. Samsung. Yeah. Samsung drives really never go wrong. Although I'm on this new cheap drive, so I bought the PNY drives. And we all know how that's going based on what's happening on the screen right now. So I decided, what about cheap NVMe drives? Maybe they're better. Well, we're transferring all this stuff off of the cheap PNY drive to the no name NVMe drive that was like 50 bucks, but we got two terabytes of NVMe drive for like 50 bucks. What can go wrong? <laughs> uh, I mean, as long as you got good backups, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, Man, why are you ignoring my message? I don't know. What King Root say? King Root. Hey, quick question. Does your bootloader theme script work on immutable distros like Vanilla OS or Silverblue? No, it does not. Immutable distros will lock the bootloader. Almost like for sure whole thing about immutable distros is everything's built on top of like something that can't be changed so for the most part every immutable distro won't work it's not to say they're bad it's just immutable distros work fundamentally different i think one of the best examples of a great immutable distro is probably steam deck steam deck is like a really really good distro for what it is and it works flawlessly do I like the fact you have to install flat packs and a janky version of Nix to get all the packages you want? Not really. But then again, it's a handheld gaming system and not really meant to be a desktop replacement, even though it can be. <laughs> can we play some uh, Steam Beats? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I forgot to enable that. I think I disabled it when we were doing... Uh... Oh, God, what was it? The Age of Empires, and then I never re-enabled it. I should have like a stop and start button on my Steam setup. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be better at this streaming thing. Here in like four or five years, I'm gonna be a pro streamer. You just watch. I'm gonna be somebody someday. <laughs> PMY is the only company that wasted my whole day transferring 100 gigs. Ah. Uh. Chris, what do you have in your home partition? Uh everything <laughs> uh now that i think about it this might take a while yeah channel plan points are blown <laughs> hey i did i don't know if you guys noticed but i did redo the emojis in chat so if you guys want to use emojis i tried to find some more meme emojis and other stuff have fun with that that should be great uh, what are we getting on speeds here? Yeah, we're getting like 400 megabytes per second. That's pretty solid. It should rip through this. Because we got Age of Empires 4, Starfield, and Cyberpunk. So roughly about 250 gigs worth of data we're transferring. The best emojis of Penguin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was looking through my emojis and I'm like, I got to do better here, guys. I need something for you guys to, to do it. So when I blow stuff up, you can you can you can sit there and meme me. I need to I need to find that uh, or maybe I'll just make the animation myself. The guy riding the bike that sticks uh, the stick in his spokes. I'm going to do that next. Now it's such a great meme. Uh, you know, this is actually transferring at a pretty good rate. Age of Empires 4 is about 40 or 50 gigs. We're about two minutes in at 400. Let's do some basic math here. 
400 megabytes per second 40 gigs that should be pretty easy to break it down it should only take 10 minutes to transfer that no 400 megabytes per second every 10 seconds is gonna be four gigs so after a hundred seconds that should be 40 gigs so it should only take two minutes to transfer all of it but we probably are getting closer to 200 so probably four minutes and it should be done <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, I think it's the small files, but most of these are pretty big uh, campaign files and stuff like those are each each video file there was about half a gig. So those are quarter of a gig to a half a gig on each one of these files you're seeing on the screen right now. It's plowing through them at a pretty good clip. I'm pretty satisfied with that transfer rate. I should have probably done threaded uh copying i don't i don't know if uh robo no i think it would cap out because right now at 400 megabytes per second that's right at the pcie uh lane limits of three gigs because i want to say three gigs would be the cap on the sata So did you return the Corsair RAM? Not yet. It's still still sitting right here. One of these days. One of these days. All right, so we're through. Yeah, Age of Empires was pretty quick, actually. That wasn't bad at all. And look at this big file. Night City Archive. We're already five gigs in. It's transferring at basically a gig every two seconds. That's not bad. That's 30 gigs a minute for these large files. Look at that. And this is, yeah, 500 megabytes a second. If it was NVMe to NVMe, we could probably get even higher. Probably double that. Greetings from a loker. Are you aware that uh, Solid GM, if so, what are... What's your take on their NVMe offerings? Yeah, see you. I, you know, I'm not much of a hardware guy. I just, I, I have a hard time giving any recommendations just because I'm such a cheap ass. I really am. If something's really nice, but it's really expensive, there's about a 99.9% .9 chance I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> so that's why I really never give much hardware advice on the channel. Uh, just because I know it's not going to be great advice. I'm going to be like, this is the cheap stuff I bought. I don't know if I recommend it, but it works for me for the most part. <laughs> uh, you think we'll run into cash saturation? Maybe. Those PMI drives don't have much cash. So we're just flying through. We're already through Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk was a hundred and... 20 gig game so we just transferred 120 gigs in less than two minutes there that was really impressive and i'm super cheap on my drives yeah <sighs> i middle note i will take out those pmi drives i probably should just throw them away and just say i learned my lesson ah <sighs> but will i ever do that i don't know I kind of want to get a new on the new upgrade. I'm going to see if I can't get well, actually. Is it worth here's here's a question for chat. Let's see. Is it worth getting an NVMe expansion card and putting the NVMe drives from like Amazon inside of it? Now, I only have like an X1 port not a full-blown uh, x16 pci port or x8 or even x4 for that matter we only have like an x1 port on the motherboard but would it be better performance comparative to a sata drive probably not right i probably should just get a better board that supports a lot more x16 <laughs> with x1 it's not worth it yeah that's what i kind of figured but i was like hmm maybe it it probably give close to the same performance though. It'd be even slower. Okay. 
Well, good to know. I just had that random thought. MVME needs at least X4. X1 doesn't have enough bandwidth to make it worth it. Not worth it at all. Well, there you go. That's the consensus. I just had that random thought and I was like, mm, no, I'll probably rec not recommend this, but it would, sure would be nice just because the SD cards on my system back there or that where the SSDs are, it's such a pain to get to and cable manage that I just don't even want to disconnect the drives. That's how bad it is. So on the next system I build, I think we switch that out. I'm going to just make sure I... I I'm not going to cheap out on the motherboard. I'm going to get really good expansive motherboards that have full PCIe slots, not just a whole bunch of X1s and like two X, one X16, one X8, like most boards do. Oh, man, I would die for a Threadripper. You see the new Threadripper, Sakari? Michael was geeking out earlier about that. <clears throat> Come on, you will cheap out again. Probably. Probably, you know me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the... I don't know. I mean, from a serious talk, like upgrading for real, I'm thinking of actually going with the 14th Gen i9s. The 14th Gen i9s just dropped today. Not a huge performance increase over the 13th Gen. No power savings. But... I mean, I don't know. I mean, it might even be worth going with a 13th gen because they'll probably go on sale with the 14th gens now arriving. So I might actually pick up those uh, 13 gen, like a 13900. Right now, I think they retail for about 700. But maybe if I can pick one up for like four or 500, that'd be a steal. And I could upgrade to ECC. Yeah. Which I didn't know the i9s could uh, run on ECC. I thought you had to go Xeon or, or go home. But apparently now the i9s do support ECC. Yeah, I've gone AMD in the past. And it's been okay. I know AMD is probably the best bang for the buck. If you're looking for budget, AMD usually you can squeeze out a little bit more with AMD. Uh, basic issues are primary issues with AMD for me amd i don't like the fact you have to do motherboard upgrades to i think it's like the agisa or whatever it is i can't remember the acronym but to upgrade the firmware in the motherboard you can actually get better performance out of the chips and them recycling the boards from generation to generation is a good idea in theory but in practice I feel like they're just not as stable as the Intel counterparts. I made a video a while back saying I think just Intel's a little bit better for stability and reliability than AMD. Definitely got skewered for saying that, but that's my rationale behind it is because of the how they do their release structures are a little bit different. Yeah. You have a 5950X with the ECC now. Now, AMD doesn't officially support ECC on the 5900 series, I think, unless you get the Pro models. The AMD Pro chips are sp specifically made with ECC in mind. Now, ECC will be enabled on a lot of the AMD chips, but they don't support them, where on the Pro series chips, they do support them. I don't know if that makes much of a difference in the end, but it's definitely worth noting. It, yeah, it's supported and working, but I don't know. If AMD's not designing them for that purpose where the Pro Chips are designed for that purpose, the Pro Chips, I think there's a little bit of a premium, like 50 or 100 bucks. I almost feel like I would rather go with the Pro Chip and not have to worry about it. Isn't uh, board dependent on the 530? Yeah, so you're there's there's a whole bunch of different... Like ECC gets complicated where people mess up with ECC is they think, hey, you just get ECC memory and pop it in a machine. No, your CPU has to be compatible with it. Your motherboard has to be compatible with it. And then the memory itself has to be ECC. And then there's different types of ECC that you can get. There's like on, on chip ECC that the error checking's happening on the memory, which is fine, but you really want it in the CPU side of things where the CPU is doing the error checking as well. 
you have that parity across all of it. So that's why you kind of want to match up all your hardware for ECC if you're going down that road. Most times it's not worth it for the residential side of things. It's really meant for massive pipelines of data, like just tons of data flowing nonstop in and out, such as like a NAS box that like 100 users connected. You definitely would want ECC memory on that, that NAS box. It'd be just stupid not to do it. But for most residential machines, it's complete overkill. So that's my thoughts on ECC. Although I just ran into an instance where I had bad memory and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had all the problems I had if I was a ECC. One, it probably would never broke. It would have been way over engineered. And two, if it did go bad, it would just ignore those sectors and it wouldn't corrupt the data like I was getting. So in my instance, even though I said, hey, it's way over engineered, I still kind of prefer it, especially based on my past experience here, where I think I'll just pay the extra couple hundred bucks and go all ECC just so I never have to worry about corrupt memory again. Because, dude, it was just a total egg on my face moment. You never need ECC. You only need ECC when uh, you have bad memory. <laughs> it was really good at, like, obviously detecting that and you're not going to run into a lot of corruption like I had with mine. Hey, and yeah, that's about it. Oh man, look at that. We are already done. Uh, oops. MMT. We'll just comment out the old home folder. So then if we go into MNT home, all right. Do you guys think that's going to work? <laughs> I don't know. All right. Holy crap, that was done. So we just transferred almost half a terabyte in 18 minutes. That's not bad. That was not bad at all. All right, here we go. Will we get booted into the home directory? The moment of truth. So far, so good. Will it work? We transplanted from the PMY drive onto the M M2. Well, that's looking... That's looking mighty good. Okay. So we got that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Can I ask why you're using Opus Souza out of curiosity? Because chat wanted me to. I said, guys, what distro would y'all like me to try? And they're like, Open Souza. And I was like, let's do it. That's why I'm using it. <laughs> it's Harry's fault and uh, Ashlyn. They always, they've been ribbing me for like literally six months now. And I was like, all right, all right, you guys, let's try it. It's been months. Okay. So now we've got that. Let's go steam. And Debian would be too boring. And Arch. I mean, I was on, what was that? I was on Arch for like a month, wasn't I? Oh, Alpine, yeah. Jeez, the APA, APK package manager is going to drive me crazy on Alpine, though. Um, If we look at Starfield, can we look at the in-game data here? Steam apps, comma. Hmm. Well... I don't even want to mod this thing. I mean, just launch wine, maybe? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ah. My browser's gone down. Oh, no. Not Google AdSense. What's happening right now? It's all broken. Well, y'all asked for it. Yeah, I think the next one's Linux from scratch or Gen 2. 
I guess it didn't work. <laughs> uh, what do we got? Let's exit. Let's just relaunch. Strange. What's happening here? What did I do? Was that something with the new version? Well, I wasn't installing an extension. That's funny. Did I break the entire... Let's launch into another app. Let's go like Gparted. Let's launch in as root, so that should work. Let's launch a non-root app. Okay, that does work. Oh, geez. Oh, cache files. Cache files. That's what happened. Because we transferred all our home. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let's just trash cache all together. Oh. No? Launch Firefox. Okay, let's try Firefox. I broke everything. What? How did I do that? Wait, no. That's not broken. Okay. Firefox is working. What did I do? All right. Let's go ref. Let's make sure everything's good here. Okay, that's fine. Nothing to do. Let's... <laughs> the, best, <laughs> the best web browser has been down. I broke it. Okay, so I cleared. Let's let's relaunch. And this time, let's go into settings. Let's try and clear. Oh, geez. What did I do? Man, I broke it good. I mean, that's kind of impressive. I'm not going to lie. Like, man, look at that. Um... What are we going to do with that? Best way to clear and relaunch. Yeah, this is where DistroBox would have been great. Time to move to another... Man, I just moved everything over here. There's no way I'm, I'm giving up that easy. Let's see. Yeah, maybe we should do Microsoft Edge. There we go. Let's see if we got Microsoft Edge... Do you want to install Microsoft Edge from the repository? Oh man, that would be a terrible idea. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we could try it. Let's just save all the extensions. Okay. Oh man, I broke it good. broken what did i do <laughs> uh, i disabled all of them i guess full page but yeah i've disabled all the extensions and nothing so i must have done something with the font cache maybe font cache just delete dot config thorium default gpu cache and that should work ah thank you one dude Let's try remove dot cat uh, config actually. Thorium default GPU cache. There we go. Does that work? Oh, weird. All right. That was odd, right, guys? All right, cool. Huh. So it was the GPU cache. So when I switched out all my home folder and I moved it from one place to the other, it corrupted my GPU cache, which was stored in that directory that one dude. 1210, thank you for that solution. Most of chat would have just let me done it. So that was really interesting. Cool. The best browser. Well, I mean, I was the one that caused that issue because what I did was I transplanted my entire home directory from one drive to another drive. Now, it sounds okay on paper doing a one-to-one -one transfer. However, permissions and certain things don't quite move the same. So cache files and those types of 
uh, really sensitive data, when you move cache files, when you move things like that, naturally, not a great, not a great end. So really kind of how it is. Take it easy, Akari. I love it. So, okay, cool. So we're back in business. Everything's good looking good. Uh, we never did get proton tricks, did we? Yeah, we never could get that going. And if we did like a pip X proton tricks, tricks could not be installed modifying the existing okay um let's do a witch proton tricks and that's in user local bin proton tricks let's remove home uh we'll just do dot local bin proton tricks all right now let's do a pip x proton tricks um remove Let's just see if there's anything there. Okay, great. So then we dive proton tricks. Look at that. All right, now we're in. Now we're cooking with gas. Okay, we will be using native. Starfield. It's going to be one seven one six seven zero four. So now we can do po proton tricks, the app ID, and then launch certain commands. Uh, let's let's try to install Vortex on this and mod Starfield. Vortex exe download .NET 6.0 Windows 10 or above. What 6.0 is it one? Is 6.0 in Wine? I can't remember. Okay. And yeah, download download. Ah, uh, let me log in here. One second. Oh, oops. Did I not have an any docs? Ah, there we go. Here we go. You all are sleeping on edge. Oh my gosh. Get out. Band. Band, I say. Microsoft Edge is the devil. <laughs> all right. Now we got that. Log in. And... Yeah, it does seem like Luchers, uh, a lot of Luchers theming between Nexus mods and that. Okay, so we're grabbing Vortex mods. Let's also satisfy the requirements for this. So if we go Proton Tricks app, uh, oh, which would be this one right here, and Wine Tricks. Yeah, can I do Wine Tricks with Proton Tricks? I can't remember. That might not work. Okay. Yeah, no, looks like it works. Um, can we just do dot net six? <laughs> I don't know if this would work. I'm kind of uh, just shooting in the dark here. Okay, that's not gonna work. Let's just, is there a GUI? Wine tricks. Let's go dash dash GUI. Let's see what we got. Would you say Edge is more of the devil than Fedora? Yes, absolutely. Come on now. You can't compare those two. Uh, what if we... Maybe Proton Tricks will already have this. Can we do dash dash GUI? Pop up. Pop up for me. Come on, give me the GUI. There we go. Okay, well. That's something. Uh, select default? Yes. All right. Not really meant for a window manager here. That's okay. Uh, we're going to install DLL components. Might need to do like an all fonts config too for this, but we're going to just try and do a base. Where's .NET? .NET 6. There it is. Okay. Install some .NET. All right. Fantastic. We've installed .NET. Uh, what? GE wine return status one aborting. Really? What is that? The inbus error dot service files. You're attempting to run GTK without a one one Y support. Okay. Just push that to number three, right? Oh, weird. I wonder how they did that. 
I can't resize this window. Yeah, everyone always is like, hey, let's go ahead and do this. Let's, let's, Wayland is being pushed for sure by the Linux community, but it needs that push. But will I be using Wayland like this year? No, not for my main daily driver. X11 is going to be far better for me for everything that I do. It's not that I'm hating on Wayland, it's just facts. Yeah. And if Wayland works great for you, by all means, I encourage more people to use Wayland because it's, it's something that needs to evolve. It needs to get there. There's still little parts that are missing for me personally. Synergy, that's a big deal. Some of the graphic stuff isn't quite there. Um, specifically going over, um, I think most of the wine stuff has been ported and works fine. But yeah. Let's see, can we do .NET 6? Can we just push that through here? I think we can just do .NET 6 and it'll just grab it and put it all through the CLI. Let's try and avoid going through the GUI. And we might need to do an export of that. Oh, that did work. Okay. All right, now let's just do Proton Tricks. Um think we can run this command let's see proton tricks and then this is just a wine tricks command now i want to say you could actually run inside the wrapper of the proton by using wine tricks as well if not we can just use wine but if not that'd be good now we can specify path to custom wine executable path to wine tricks wine gooey <laughs> yeah channel uh, channel points are going to be removed until i figure out how what to do with them i would love to have like a uh, interactive like light system or something in here that you could redeem with with channel points i think that'd be fun <laughs> and i might just do like a workout stream where you just redeem all your all the, all the po points are saved mind you <laughs> But I think we'll do like a redemption where you guys can just redeem for 60 minutes straight. Whatever it is. Burpees, pull-ups, dips, whatever. I think that would be fun. We'll do a stream where you can you can pick between burpees, pull-ups. Uh, I don't know. What else? Squats, I guess. I'm trying to think of what other like just terrible workouts that you could punish someone with. <laughs> yeah, I inevitably everyone's going to just pick push-ups and I'm just going to end up doing like a thousand push-ups. That'd be hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely under the weather, Rocky. I originally had another stream plan, but I was like, I've got a head cold. If I try to do actual work right now, I'm just going to blow it up. Much like I blew up my system in today's stream. I just wasn't thinking very clearly. Mathis, thanks for the tier one, man. Four months. Woo. Don't worry, all the points are there. They're saved, guys. They're saved. We're gonna we're gonna do like a uh, a workout stream or something, and then you guys will be a redeem for whatever workout you want me to do. We can do minute minute planks, whatever it is. Yeah, I did a burpee mile where we did burpees for an entire mile at my gym. That was fun, but we did it like with, I think there was like four four other people on the team, so it was just. One after the other for an entire mile. All right. We've got this up. Uh, probably the easiest way to do that. Proton tricks. Dash L. And 17167 is what we want. So steam. Steam. We're going to go into steam apps. Compat data, 171, and this is going to be our prefix. This is the wine bottle that, that Steam uses. We'll use this and then launch our file that we want to do, which in this case, it's Vortex. So we're going to go wine prefix, and that's going to be a dollar sign uh, PWD like that. 
that's going to grab the pwd command from our thing fill out that massive long file command then we're going to do wine uh, to launch a windows based file and then we're going to fill that in with our home directory forward slash downloads and then vortex dash exe so this should launch vortex from within our, our proton prefix from steam so this should be able to launch and install it and then mod out starfield sprung thanks for the tier one man and then we got the teleprompter coming too that's gonna be great all right we got some visual c plus plus there let's see if we got any dependencies that we're missing i'm kind of iffy whether this will work because we are missing okay vortex requires net to perform okay let's go fix i feel like we did net but okay 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 that looked like it fixed it i don't know if it we if it can do it just quite Okay, close that. Games. Let's add our Starfield game. I don't know. This is actually looking like it's going to work. I hate to... I shouldn't have said that. Should not have said that. Okay. Manage. Download. Login. Oh, it's defaulting to Firefox. Uh, one second. Okay. Let's try that. Installing game. Vortex will respawn. Okay. Upon completion. Hmm. Well, I appreciate it, Sprung. It's fun, man. I love doing this. That's like my favorite thing. And that and people can get like a real experience of what I go through. Because sometimes when you package all this up, you spend hours to do a 10 minute video and then people think it's just going to work in 10 minutes <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't as we've seen sometimes on stream <laughs> and i usually hunt for a way to break whatever it is i'm trying to do all right let's try that again okay vortex extension Did that work starfield hasn't been automatically discovered okay continue Shoot. Okay. C. Dot net. Where did it install it now? Damn it. Where, oh, where is you, Starfield? Okay, that's that's the Linux drive. <laughs> oh, it broke it. Ah, oh, darn it. Okay. Let's let's track this down real fast we'll just put it in uh, workspace four let's let's drop into this steam bottle steam apps and compat data and 171 okay so we have drive c here is that pfx oh no I launched it incorrectly. My bad. Oh, come on. I should have been in the PFX folder and then run Vortex. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Okay. This one's going to work better this time. We're just going to pretend like none of that just happened and I launched it from the correct uh, wine bottle. Uh, that's a Momentum Bar Manasaur. Mansoor. Mansoor. Yeah, the prefix is PFX. Yeah, Jim. I just caught that. I'm like, man. I put the put it in the wrong spot. Alright, check fail. Let's fix it. Let's see. This might not work installing the .NET. We can try it, but usually you need wine tricks to do that for you. We'll find out if that worked or not. Okay. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> Everyone else runs Windows to install Starfield and play. Hey, in my defense loop, I did play it briefly once it started up. And then I was like, hey, this just worked. Now let's mod it in Linux, which is a whole different bag of worms. So it's not that it didn't work this time around. It's more of, well, now I want to mod it. <laughs> Who actually plays vanilla Starfield? What kind of crazy person does that? I know Todd Howard shouldn't. He, I know he never does. All right. Let's go to games. We're going to go to Starfield now. We're going to go manage. We're going to download. We're going to log in. And we're not going to log into that. We're going to copy that. We are already cached with our browser. I keep forgetting I need to need to do that so we will fix that up installing game allow uh, vortex will restart upon completion we might need to do this again we're gonna find out all right here we go okay now we're gonna do it one more time download i see it going in the background down there relaunch all right perfect hasn't been automatically detected. okay fine now we should see it in our computer c drive and program files uh maybe all right well maybe under steam Steam apps. Where are you, Starfield? Did it not? Oh, dude, don't tell me they did something funny. No. Surely they wouldn't do that. Uh, okay, well, that's partially where the game saves are, but there should be the actual files from the company that's vortex <laughs> oh excuse me oh yeah, yeah. I, I believe the minecraft server is still up there's a vortex for cloud gaming and a vortex for modding i believe this is the modding oh <sighs> but it's not able to detect it let's go into um, I just, oh gosh, I really hate going outside of the prefix for this, but I don't think we have a choice. Oh, okay. And then it's in the hidden folder, which isn't displayed in this browser. Shoot. <laughs> oh, gosh. Steam. Cancel. Okay. Okay, no. Uh, you taking Claritin? No, I, I'm, I haven't taken anything yet. I got a really bad cold. I went bike riding yesterday, and that really set me under. Let's go properties, compatibility. Uh, let's go general. Browse files. PWD. That's. That's where it put it. Local share. Okay. All right. One more time. With feeling this time. Okay. I think what we can do here. Z colon. And I don't think we can try. Yeah, I can't do forward slashes. I didn't think. We'll do. Modify this. Okay, this is ridiculous, but bear with me. We're almost there. We will modify this. <laughs> it's so silly. Oh, all right. There's got to be an easier way. I am going the most difficult route, and I know it. Okay. 
we've got our mods. Now we could drop the mods in here. I don't think Me Nexus mods will be able to do it. Let's grab like script extender. Vortex, is that gonna even? Yeah, that, that's not gonna work. Let's just download it manually. Okay. And can we launch into this and go downloads? I don't know if we can drag into that. Oh, geez. What, where did I put it? This, this is just insanity. This view, uh, compact view. Okay. All right. There's Nexus mods there. There should be a seven zip file for SFSE. Okay. Here we go. Does that work? Okay, that doesn't work, but, hmm. Install from file, downloads. Okay, that, okay. We're looking good. We'll grab SFSC. Okay. We're in business. So it does look like it is working. Maybe. So we'll have to get the essential mods here. Uh, go mods, track mods. We'll grab our extension achievement enabler files and download. Okay. Download and then manual download for this guy and download track mods. And then we'll try it out. What's the best way to do it? Probably. Star UI would probably be a good way to check it. This is going to be tricky launching the script extender through Proton. I don't know how well that script extender is going to inject into the executable because of the compatibility layer. I guess we'll find out, right? That seems a little bit on the dicey side of things. Star UI. Let's see what else we have. Let's get rid of all the startup intros and all that garbage. We'll just download that. Okay. That should be a good basis. And I believe we can just go install, downloads, go by modified date, clean field, bam. Elevate. I wish it would do a self elevation. Is there a setting for that? Okay, yep, 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 yep. It should be self-elevation. Multi-user mode. Oh, oh, no, okay. Mods, okay. Simlink method. Oh, can we change that method to... I don't know if the Simlink method's gonna work. We might need to come back to that. Anywho. We'll, we'll, we'll revisit that here in a second. Let's just finish our install and our mods. This is probably not going to work, but it's worth a shot. Vortex color 60. Okay, read me. Okay, finish. All right. Elevate. Uh-oh. It crashed while deploying mods. I'm sure it's fine. Okay, downloads. Did we already get Baca? Oh, we did not. Let's grab Baca achievements. That's there. Elevate. Crash again. Relaunch. Odd. Install from file. So we have a total of five mods we're going to try it out with. And every time I elevate, it crashes. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. This is just really interesting. 
says it's deploying mods, but I'm just not sold that this is actually doing that. If you look, I don't know if there's going to be a file manager that opens it. It does. It's there. Okay. And if we open the game folder, game mods folder, does it have, we have SF loader, but does it have anything else? Yeah, it looks like clean fields there. Okay. I think that's enough. I got an idea of how it's structured. Let's see if this actually launches. Uh, we still need to do some cleanup here to it. If we look over here, let's check this out. We'll go, was it browse files? Yeah. I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> Those Look at these weird sim links that Vortex tried to add. That's not going to work. Is it? I don't think so. No way. I mean, maybe. Can you use Spotify on... I don't know. We can try it out. Uh, we got, oh wait, no, um, how do I use that without, uh, let's just go Harris Heller actually. It's like, I don't want to get copyright claimed. Here we go. There we go. Does that work? Let's see. Yeah, that works. Double music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Spotify works. Let's fix... We'll try this, but uh, I don't have high hopes for that. This is where the game files reside, but we need to copy this into our prefix the the proton prefix which would be 171 drive c no where's the is it public no it's not public there should be another is it hidden, maybe? View hidden files. Huh. Usually there's like a Steam user like that. But I don't see it. So this redirects to documents, it says. No way would it put it here, right? That'd be cool if it did. So it has to redirect it to somewhere else. It needs to be in the PFX directory. Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's just launch and see what it does. I don't think any of this will work, but let's find out. Right now, it's not going to launch the script extender. We'll try the, the script extender next. Yeah, I got a really bad cold. It's nasty. All right. I'm skipping my workout today because of it. But you get longer stream, that's a good thing. I would have I would have been working out right now. I actually did load up React on a stream before loop. I think it was uh God, what was that? I want to say like three months ago. It wasn't that long ago, actually, where we booted up React. <laughs> oh, win, win 2000, man. I remember it. It's where I cut my teeth on. All right. Let me think about this. 
We need to get that PFX. <sighs> Don't skip a workout because of the cold. I probably shouldn't have. If I didn't feel like crap, I totally would have. All right, 171. PFX. Okay. My documents. E. All right, we've got it. So then let's let's close that. We're going to just change this guy. All right, Vim. What is it? Starfield Custom. All right, Starfield Customs in. We'll cat Starfield Custom. All right, so that's what we're looking at for Starfield Custom that we just created. And now that's all great. Now we just got to redirect the SFC loader through Steam. Uh, S, uh, S, C, E, Starfield, Steam. What is it? Steam properties. Properties. Oh my gosh. All right. Here we go. Okay. So let's uh, go to our directory again. Ah, where are you at? Properties. Installed files. Browse that. Let's push this over to Workspace 4. PWD. Ah. We're going to just grab this PWD here. Let's check to make sure we have... I still don't think these links, they're being them being read like that. I don't think the redirect's gonna work quite because of vortex, but we'll try it out anyways. Uh SFSE loader. What was it? Underscore loader. And copy that. Uh, wasn't there like a skip movies command too? Did I miss a Starfield? What is it? Starfield launch options Steam. Yeah, that's what I've done. I want to say there was another option in there, but let's go ahead and launch this. This should possibly get us there, but I don't know. All right, we'll know if it's going to work because it'll skip right to the uh, main screen. Yeah, crash. I figured, I figured as much. All right, let's take out those those redirects, those dead sim links. It's just, it's not going to work. I would have loved to use a mod manager, but honestly, at this point, the mod manager is just more... It's more of a pain than it's worth, really. And those are wrappers. See that? What the hell? Like, you look at it, and it just... What is it doing? All right, we're going to clear that out. And then we're going to actually do... Did it mess up? What's this? Yeah, it's just junk. The sim links are not going to work because of how Windows does sim links. It uses like MK link, where sim links are done just using the LM command in Linux. It makes sense that that methodology wouldn't work with Vortex, so you're going to have to manually install everything. Okay, good to know. And does that mean... Okay, we're going to just take... Uh, 
let's just clear out some of this. Um, move star dot zip. Uh, was there any seven? No, there was no seven Z's. Oh no, there is. All right, great. And we're just going to clear some of this out. I will leave that. Breeze green. Skate cove. All right, now we have those. 7Z. We just install 7Z. Or is it 7-zip, actually? Three. Uh, it's Kitty, actually. It looks a lot like Alacrity, but... Uh, Kitty's in all the main repos. Alacrity's not not in some repos. I probably should move to Alacrity, but honestly, I thought about moving to ST as well. Just for simplicity's sake. Because so I don't mind ST. Yeah, ST would be better. I was thinking the same thing. I just haven't quite made it through. Not yet, at least. Oh, yeah, yeah. Neovide's amazing. Love it. I think, yeah, there is a way to disable Vortex. I gotta add specific things because of how the floating works in DWM. It's, I, I could float my window, but... ah, Yeah, let's try that. Dathus, now that you say it, let's, let's relaunch... Uh, let's relaunch that. Um, we have all our add-ins right here in case we need it. Uh, oh, we were missing Baka as well. Was there a Baka achievement? Oh, Baka was RAR. So we grabbed Baka. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. Remind me to delete all this. Keep forgetting. Uh, all right. That's all good. So now let's jump back into our prefix, which it's quite the journey. I should make like a hot key button for this, but I haven't yet. Uh, let's see. Steam apps. Compat data 171. PFX. Here is our PFX, and we should be able to launch wine directly from here. So we go wine prefix equals, and we're just going to go dollar sign and wrap PWD. And then we'll launch wine. And then we want drive C program files black tree gaming. Vortex, Vortex EXE. And that should launch Vortex. Oops. What did I, did I type something wrong? What did I do? Um, I broke it. Is it, it's oh, not listed anywhere else. Huh. Oh, no, it hasn't, Viking. Ah, I didn't realize about the user friendliness on that. I might look at redoing that framing. Well. Yeah, that's a good. I'm glad you brought it up. I'll take a look at that on my mobile. I forgot to even check mobile. Failed to resolve your host IP, blah, blah, blah. That shouldn't matter. Mango HUD. I don't know what Mango HUD's getting involved. Why would... Sort of maybe a global Mango HUD enable? Okay. Huh. Why are you not working? <sighs> ah. It's just not worth it. Screw all this. We're just... I'm, I'm done. 
I'm just done. I am totally done. What we're going to do now. We are just going to go and do it the easy way. Right? <laughs> uh, we'll grab SFCE. Oh, I don't have... What do we... You guys like ARC, File Roller? What do you guys like for uh, archivers? I'm going to say File Roller. I kind of like File Roller the best. Although... Uh, pzip is actually a i think that's a linux tool and a windows yeah unzip's great for command line i just kind of wanted to do it and just drag and drop let's let's do that yeah let's all right let's just go opi pzip pzip has really good global compatibility between all of them so we'll just use pzip Okay. All right. Titus. Games. And this should... Is PZIP not in here? There it is. Make it a default. Oh, did not respect my theming. Can I drag and drop? No. So FO mod. It's this one interface okay why why am i having problems with this i feel like just a uh, terminal works better <laughs> i'm so killing you guys all right sorry we're just gonna do it through terminal oh my gosh that was hilarious all right what do we got Installation. Simply install in your favorite mod or enable blah, 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 blah. Alternate manual. For manual, copy the interface folder to your Starfield data folder. You can find the optional variants in there. Okay. Just so it's just the interface folder we have to copy. Okay, great. And we'll just copy that. I'll take the interface folder, cut that, and put that in Starfield, which if we look over here, we'll go into data, paste. So I have interface over here. And next up, we'll do this one. Let's just copy that. I'll go up one directory. This is gonna get so ugly. Uh, send to can we just do 7z? What's the unzip command for 7z? Just extract dash e, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, CLI is fine. At this point, we're just going to just go full hard mode. Why? Why not? Just e. Okay. So 7z, e, and sfse. All right. So then we have that here. Don't we need to do like extract? I guess we don't really need that. I feel like you do though. The permissions don't have the execute ability. I feel like adding it just, I don't know. Something's in me just like, hey, you gotta have that. Okay. So then we have that installed. Uh, let's grab clean field. We'll, uh, what is that? Clean field's going to be a zip file. Oh, yay. Unzip clean field. All right. All right, cat. Read me. Installation inside the zip, blah, blah, blah. Copy the selected interface to data. Um, inside Bethesda logo. I think we don't need to do the Bethesda logo part. All right, cool. Got it. So if we look at here, we go just CD options and we want the, I guess, keep MOD or just, nah, let's just remove it all. It's all bloat, right? And we'll go 60 FPS. All right, cool. 
Let's just grab that. Copy. Ah, uh, right. I I don't even know what I'm trying to do. If, it, if, if, if Starfield gets modded on Linux, it's just going to be by the grace of God at this point. It, it's just like, what, what? What am I even doing? I don't even know. All right. So we got clean field. Um, what, what's next? Uh, Baka. Do we have Unrar? Ah, we don't have Unrar. We need Unrar. This, this is even better than playing Starfield. This is more enjoyable than playing Starfield. What, what kind of weirdo plays Starfield without doing it all through Terminal? That just, that just doesn't sound, that doesn't sound fun. That sounds boring to me. Oh, lordy. Unrar Baka. Uh, extract. Baka. All right. So for this one, man, there's not much in this one. It's just a DLL file. That was it. Well. I feel like there'd be more to that. So I guess you just put it in the folder. Yeah. That's it. Wow. Simple. We'll just uh, cut that. Paste that guy in the root folder. What could go wrong? Man, updating these are going to be so much fun. <laughs> oh, oh. Gosh. Did I already do Starfield? Uh, I think I was just doing the all-in-one. Uh, plugins. I think the plugins, this is pretty simple. I want to say we can just go copy and then put that over here. Let's just double check that on the all-in-one. If we go into files, let's say we go manual, but we go over here should be data sfse plugins okay <laughs> oh it's still wrong right plugins so it's inside the data folder the sfce and inside of the data okay yeah uh and did we already get start yeah we already got start ui we got baka we got all in one i think that was it we're only doing five plugins. Good lord. This would be just a nightmare to manage. I'm pretty sure this will work, though. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, I give this about a 5% chance of working. But let's give it a whirl. Why not? Yeah, whatever. Just play it anyways. Yeah, crash. Crash immediately. <laughs> and nope oh man that's fun it's fun yeah i mean i i will look up different ways of modding this i think you have to have a mod manager vortex i don't think it's going to be very friendly for linux people probably do like mod organizer 2 mo2 as it's called i would probably switch to that be I, I think it would be much more linux friendly because instead of having a bunch of pop-ups like vortex it's a lot more context driven menu uh context menu driven i think it would be a lot better and a lot more compatible i don't know if i care enough to actually do that though to be honest with you i just kind of wanted to mess around today <laughs> And I think that's what we did today. I, I don't know if anybody got any value from home. Hopefully you got some entertainment value just seeing me suffer a little bit here. I, I enjoy this stuff. It's just fun tinkering around. I really didn't care if this worked or not. If we're being real. I would just was like, ah, let's, let's just mess around. And it was fun. 
today's VOD title. Mod Starfield on Linux, but didn't work. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it could write it and maintain it and all that. It's just, man, that would just be a pain. At that point, why not just dual boot into Windows? I think it's fun. And if we really wanted to play a game, we could have just stuck with Age of Empires 4. Just saying, I would have been totally okay with that. However, it probably would have put everybody to sleep. And I don't want that. I love you guys. I want to entertain. So I thought, hey, how do I break things? I know. Let's install Starfield mods. That shit doesn't work on Windows very well. I'm sure it's going to go over fantastic on Linux. <laughs> And that's kind of where I'm at. I'm sure you can do it. You can manually do it. And I'm sure there's better ones. I think MO2 would have probably netted something, but it would obviously a lot more tinkering involved. Ah, it's fun. It's fun. It's all in good fun. That's why we do this. It's just more for fun, exploration, and whether or not we get it done or not. Eh. It's all about the journey, not the destination. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Hopefully, I'm feeling better by then. This, I knew, was going to be a train wreck stream going into it. I'm just glad my system's still functioning after all that. I thought for sure this was going to end in tragedy. If we're being real here, I really, uh, after moving the home folder, I was like, uh-oh, this might be it. That that That's what I was thinking. But needless to say, uh, my synergy's not working. Uh-oh. Before I, before I jet off here, what happened here? Synergy service, what, what? Did you fall down on the job? Primary screen unavailable. What? Open screen, no insufficient permissions. Uh, let's just restart that, shall we? We're just going to kill this uh, synergy service and then bring it back. I thought I'd do something cool and make Synergy uh, System D service this time around. Not working great. Um, gotta say, uh, I I I think I regret doing this. Synergy. Okay. Yeah, OpenSUSE is not bad. Not bad. Ah, screw it. I'm done. I'm done. Whatever. It's it's over. Goodbye, all. That was frustrating.